stuff out there now. Not that I'm afraid of my spirit man getting messed up, but I don't want the junk in me. Amen. And you ought to not to. You ought to be selective of what you hear. The Bible warns us, pay attention to what you hear. And so she had me to, I was sitting on the steps at the end of Bible study and I just couldn't stop reading. And it was something in that statement by Joseph Prince on the Holy Communion table that gave me another piece that I had been looking for. I'm going to tell you, when you're hungry for God, just start asking him questions. See, won't he answer them? He wants us to ask him. And I'm an asker. I will ask God. Did you find it yet? Yeah. Yeah. So I want to read it. Yeah. You got this little teeny, teeny weeny. My type is big, <laughs> even with glasses on. That's how he mm -mm, mine came out big. I can read it. Let me see. Do you, you don't have my response on there, right? Okay. All right, so let's read his. You could probably open mine. Can you open mine? I can go open all of them. Okay. I want y'all to hear this. Okay. So let's go to his first. All right. And this is, yeah. This is what Apostle Randall Furlow said. Holy Communion, one of the sacraments of the church. So many are trying to divorce the things that set the church apart from the world to the point where what is sacred has become offensive. But we exemplify the distinction with righteous pride. We belong to Jesus Christ. We are his body. We are Christians. We are his nation and his church. And he's talking about how people no longer believe that the Holy Communion table is applicable. So this is what I, I don't reply to everybody. Y'all know that. I don't, I don't reply to most people. I'll pray with you on there and I'll wish you happy birthday but the rest of the stuff I don't get into because sometimes my spiritual revelations are higher than some people's and I'm not getting into a debate with people that don't sit under my teaching you can't throw people meat when they're accustomed to milk so I don't get into debates with people but anyway I said thanks son the ones who don't have revelation about this vitally important holy meal needs to get the revelation that Holy Spirit gave me. And I taught it on a few Sundays ago. When we don't correctly discern the truth about his body and blood, this is why many in the church are weak, sick, and are dying prematurely. 1 Corinthians 11, 29 to 30 says Jesus died so that we could have life more abundantly. Thanks, son, and keep standing for the truth. I have your back, Mom Fortson. And he wrote back, I love you, Apostle Mom. Thanks for having my back. means the world to me. But that just gave me the confirmation that I'm on the right track because the devil's angry. He wants to take the most powerful elements out of the church and have people think that it's just a ritual. But it's not. But it's not. It is the most, for me, life-changing, faith-building ordinance of the church that I have ever encountered. And so I want to share some things with you today, and I want you to keep that in mind. And um, open your heart to receive. So let's submit ourselves right now to the amazing teaching ministry of Holy Spirit and allow him to give us some more additional revelations. I want to say the second part of our theme, how our healing is a part of our forgiveness. Now last week it was a, a snowstorm and so we had several people out that should have been here to hear this word. Quite a few of you did come, but there were leaders out and it's important, not that the rest of you aren't, Please hear me through. It's important that my leaders get what I get because I depend on them to give what I give to all of you because I can't do it all myself.
So if we're, my leaders are on the same page with me, then it gives me more peace and flexibility to keep moving forward in what God wants to do with me next. And so I taught the first part of it, and I pray that everyone, specifically my leaders that were not here, please get the tape or go out online and begin to listen to it. But the thing is how our healing is a part of our forgiveness. We went to Psalms 103, and I'm going to ask you to go back there again today. That's our foundation scripture, Psalms 103. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3, as I did on last week. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 3, and I'm reading in the Amplified Translation, and it will be on the board. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deepest within me. Bless his holy name. Bless affectionately gratefully praise the Lord oh my soul and forget not one of all his benefits so I questioned the Lord I said you mentioned soul twice and I know how important our soul is everybody who um, submits to this ministry know that I teach that the soul is the mind the will and the emotions which plays a great part in our day-to-day -day life our soul our soul is made up of our mind. Our mind is our thinker. This is where we get thoughts. And if we hear the word of God, faith comes by hearing the word of God, we will have the right thoughts. So our mind needs to be renewed with the right thoughts, our thinker. So every time your mind engages in the word, you should be focusing on, focusing on the fact that spirit and life that comes from God's word is renewing your mind. Hallelujah. We can be the most intelligent people in the entire world just simply because we yield our mind to the word of God. We will have God's mind. And then the second part of our soul is our will. Our will is our chooser. Your chooser, your will will get you in great trouble if you don't submit your will to God. And one thing God won't do is control your will. So your will can either take you to God or it can take you away from God. And God, because he chose it that way, he has to allow you to choose. He said, you choose life or death. You choose blessing or cursing. He said, but I would admonish you to choose the blessing. And so our will is a part of our soul. And also, which is called our chooser. And then the third part of our soul is our emotions. Our emotions are our feelers. It's how we feel, our emotions. I feel like I love you, and at the same time, I can feel like I hate you. Our emotions are either going to be controlled by God or they're going to be controlled by flesh. But they're all important. My emotions. You all know that I shared with you, God said that until you get your emotions lined up, sure, your body's not going to heal. My emotions. I had toxicity in my emotions stress come on saints some of you have unforgiveness yeah anger all those things can can cause your body to be sick and stay sick even though you love god so your feelers glory to god your emotions and so twice the author is saying hallelujah that i'm going to bless the lord hallelujah with my soul my mind, my will, and my emotions. And then in verse 3, he said, in verse 2, he says, and forget not one of all his benefits. So he's beginning to reveal to us his benefits. All right? And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But verse 3, this is the, the key verse that we, I want to zone in on now. Who forgives every one of all your iniquities and we learned last week that iniquities means sins bad and immoral behaviors and transgressions so when you see that word iniquities it's talking about either sins it's talking about bad and immoral behaviors it's talking about transgressions so he forgives every one of all our iniquities who heals each one of all your diseases that's sicknesses weaknesses distresses pains anything that affects your physical body 
and in in the scripture you note that he uses in this one scripture he's talking about forgiveness of all of our iniquities but at the same time he's talking about who heals every one of all your diseases so he these are benefits are you hearing me so listen Holy Spirit revealed to us on last week that King David, who wrote this psalm, was used by God to reveal the various covenant benefits of redemption for every believer in Christ. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I feel compelled to say this right now, and I may repeat it again. The reason why, glory to God, I'm so excited about this, though it's in the Old Testament, but nobody can fulfill this covenant benefit but one person so we know that King David is prophesying concerning the church of the Lord Jesus Christ make no doubt about it yeah some things are in the Old Testament but God is using his prophets his leaders to prophesy into the church and we have to rightly divide the word and know when something is for us Nobody can fulfill this benefit but one person. No one else qualifies. Yeah. So I said it a little sooner than I wanted to, but God kept compelling me to give that peace because it's important as we go forward. So let's focus our attention, hallelujah, on the benefits in verse 3 again. This scripture reveals that both the forgiveness of all our sins, and he didn't say some sins. My Bible says all sins. And at the same time, in the same verse, the same scripture, the healing of all. It didn't say some sicknesses. It said all of our sicknesses are declared in this same verse together. The proof. I'm going to give the proof of David's prophetic word of this covenant benefit of redemption for the church I'm going to also read a scripture that's going to give us the proof that he forgave all of our sicknesses and diseases and all iniquities and sins so go with me again to one of my favorite scriptures in the old covenant that also is called the substitutionary scripture or the scripture that prophesies the Lord's substitutionary death and that's Isaiah 53 Verses 4 and 5. I'm building your foundation. So that you can live this. And not just say I went to church and had a good word. What did she preach on? Well, uh, no. We're building foundations. So when you're out of my sight. This word is still working in you. Give the Lord some praise right there. Because he's faithful. Amen. So we're in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. This is the proof of King, J King David's prophetic word in Psalms 103, the benefits of forgiveness of all our sins and the healing of all our diseases. Verse 4, Isaiah 53. Surely he has, he's prophesying, past tense, has, bore our griefs. And that word in the original Hebrew text is sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses. And it's saying sicknesses meaning every sickness, weaknesses meaning every weakness, and distresses meaning every distress. Every stressful thing, every emotional stress that you and I would ever experience is included in this substitutionary promise of God. This again can only be referencing the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that qualifies. Do I have an amen? amen? And then it says, and he carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Everything you and I would ever have a right to be punished for because of our sinful nature. He carried it. Glory to God. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. But he was wounded. We talked about those wounds and stripes last week, amen? He was wounded. Come on, somebody, talk to me. We talked about that last week or you forgot? He was wounded for our transgressions. What did we say transgressions are? 
our iniquities, our bad behaviors, immoral behaviors, right? And so he was wounded for our past, present, and future sins. That's why the New Testament believers have to stop operating under the law and get themselves under grace. Because the law said you got to do something first. Grace said God did it for us. We have to show up and receive it. So he was wounded. Hallelujah. For our transgressions. He was bruised. Bruised. When he got those wounds, we talk about how blood came out of those wounds for our, the forgiveness of our sins. When, he, when his body was crushed or bruised, blood came out for us, for the forgiveness of our sin, for our guilt and iniquities, okay? Our iniquities, all of our sin nature, everything under the generation generational curses we have a new dna now every curse that started in the garden of eden glory to god he was the fulfillment of that prophetic word that god gave hallelujah to our first parents when they sinned jesus will be the one that would destroy the enemy's head amen then it goes on to say the chastisement that word means punishment Needful to obtain peace and well-being. That word peace is shalom. Well-being means wholeness and completeness. God has made us whole. Jesus has made us whole and complete. Glory to God. Spirit, soul, and body. That's what wholeness means. God don't want us just healed in our bodies. He wants us whole in our emotions and whole in our spiritual walk he wants us whole spirit soul and body so when he was punished and in the courts of heaven you know that if he was punished for us now if we accept the punishment that we're in him that's called double jeopardy in the kingdom of heaven now they got some rules on earth but i'm talking about heaven right now that means that we can't be charged for what he already was charged for do i have an amen amen, amen. it will be illegal Amen. So he, glory to God, he is the one that took our punishment so that we could receive and obtain peace, nothing missing, broken, or lacking, and well-being, wholeness, completeness, divine health. And it was done for who? For us, right? That was upon him. And with the stripes, but well, what came out of the stripes? His blood. Blood came out of his wounds. Blood came out of his stripes. The blood that came out of his wounds for our transgressions forgave us and made us eternally righteous. Remember last week? But the blood that came out of his stripes is also separate. It healed us and made us whole. Brought us peace. You should never settle for anything but peace in your life. Because if you put up with any of this stuff going forward after knowing what the word says, you're making his sacrifice null and void. Hello? <laughs> so, with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Some of you remember the day I came and prophetically spoke to you that God said to me, Cheryl, I don't want my people just healed. I want them whole. He said, I assign you to bring my people to wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. He wants us to walk in our full inheritance. So what do we see here? Hallelujah. That Jesus is the only person that can fulfill this prophetic promise this benefit Spur first spoke about over in psalms 103 amen verse 3 now it's being confirmed through isaiah who was a major prophet he wasn't prophesying about jeremiah he wasn't prophesying about ezekiel he wasn't prophesying about anybody but the lord jesus christ you need to give him some praise right there So this scripture reveals that both the forgiveness of all our sins and the healing of all our sicknesses 
in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established these scriptures are declaring hallelujah that everything we read in Psalms 103 verse 3 is confirmed in this scripture somebody bless his name yeah now declare this out of your mouth with me because what you say is more so what you're going to believe the proof is in both these scriptures that he forgave all our sickness and diseases and all our iniquities and our sins yeah yeah so Isaiah 53 4 and 5 reveals this covenant benefit of all both our sins and our sicknesses no believer in Christ has to live on earth with sin that no longer has dominion over us or live with sicknesses that Jesus bore and carried away at Calvary's cross you and I have a right to fight and I'm gonna tell you I I'm first I'm, I have my hand up first though it belongs to us it's a fight until you get an understanding it's a fight the enemy going to send every sinful thing, every sickness and disease after you. Nobody in here can say, I've never had to battle with some sin. I've never had to battle, come on, with sickness or disease. The enemy comes. He's the thief. He comes. He keeps coming. He's the thief. But you and I are being built up in, our, in the foundation, hallelujah, of our belief system that we don't have to put up with it. Now I raised my voice there on purpose. We don't have to put up with it. Why? In the courts of heaven, it's documented that the blood that came from his wounds to forgive me and the blood that came from his stripes to heal me is on that mercy seat. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus took it to heaven. Glory, glory to his name. And he laid it on that mercy seat. And every day that blood is speaking because it has a voice. It's speaking mercy and grace for those that have accepted my substitutionary sacrifice. And I say amen Jesus. And that's how I'm going to live every day of my life. I will fight any disease or any temptation of sin. Hallelujah. I will fight you because you're not mine. I'm not going to claim you. When you come and knock at my door, I'm not taking ownership to you. I'm not putting on no more pajamas or night clothes and getting to bed with you. You not going to control my life. Because my foundation is being built on a solid rock. And the Bible says storms come to everybody. But that person that builds their house on a solid rock, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My house is going to still be standing when the storm is over. You need to give God some praise. And that ought to be your confession of faith. Thank you, Lord. He carried them both away on Calvary's cross bless his holy name the finished works of the cross took care of both through the same all-powerful blood that came out of the stripes of Jesus that provided divine healing and health for us and the blood the wounds of the blood hallelujah from the Lord Jesus Christ that provided complete forgiveness hallelujah of our sins and also purchased our eternal righteousness somebody say hallelujah that's my new identity that's why he calls it a gift it's a gift righteousness is a gift we didn't earn it we got it when Jesus shed that blood and we accepted his sacrifice we are righteous not because we do things right all the time we are righteous glory to God because he's righteous and we're in him and we get to partake of his sacrifice isn't that wonderful that doesn't mean we'll never miss it, but when we miss it, we ask God to forgive us and cleanse me with your blood. It's the blood that does it. And the Bible said, as far as the east is from the west, I will remember your sin no more. East and west, it just keep going around and around. You can't catch one from the other. That's how far God said he will forgive. 
Is that good? Somebody say the finished works of the cross. The finished works of the cross. Is that good? So listen. The Lord's blood that came out of his wounds and bruises forgave us. Don't let the devil put you in any kind of condemnation ever again. And let me tell you something. When you get revelation of that, even when you mess up, you will not call yourself whatever name the devil has tried to label you or your life. You won't do that anymore. You say, uh-uh, nope. Because sometimes the flesh is not fully developed or fully healed in the area and you'll find yourself slipping back, but you don't have to stay back. Come on, saints. We're not teaching you to practice sin. We're saying that when you sin, you need to know I'm the righteousness of God. I have a new identity and devil you alive. And if you keep saying it to your body, your body will not crave that thing anymore. Your body will not want to go in that direction. Sometimes we get tempted. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yes, sir. And things talk to you. Yeah, I was telling Pastor Deborah yesterday because I've been doing the, the keto regimen and it's really good for me. And I'm getting a lot of success. But one of the things that I've known for years and years and years that anything that's processed is going to turn to sugar in your body and sugar causes all kinds of toxicity. I know some of y'all who love sugar, you can just tune me out right now. I'm not talking to you. So you don't have to get mad. But anyway, sugar um, destroys the liver and it destroys your body organs and it also sends toxicity into settle into your body I've known that it mutates your your cells it causes cancer and all those other heart diseases and all other kind of stuff It's deadly simply deadly and there's some alternatives that's why I go to naturopathic doctors so that they can tell me what is the alternative that God gave us that we can eat and not what man gave us so you don't have to be without something you just have to change what you do so anyway so one of the things that has to come out of my diet is all sugar. And so if anybody know West Indians, honey, I can't eat my greens and my vegetables without rice. White rice have to be mixed in this. It just is, it's been in my brain since I was a child. We grew up rice for breakfast, rice for lunch, rice for dinner, rice dessert, rice... <laughs> rice pudding everything okay so for me to give up rice and so when I first started going to Dr. Alley to get my alignments and she's a naturopathic she said you got to take that stuff out and I said Dr. Alley, I'll give up everything but rice she said okay so uh, you know I kept pulling with a little here a little there or I just have a little spoon for whatever but it's destructive to your liver and how many know you can't live without your liver? You got two kidneys. You can live with one kidney, but you can't live without your liver. And so, because the liver purifies your blood, it flushes all of that stuff out. Everything that turns to glucose and all of that sugary stuff, it flushes it out. So now, if that's all you're putting in there, can you imagine what it looked like? Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> so if I don't get in agree with, with us, <laughs> I'll have to accept this. But I'm just, I'm a teacher. I have studied this out, and plus I know what it did to my body. So yesterday, long story short, so yesterday, um, got ready to eat my dinner, and I was doing some leftovers, and so, of course, um, had saved some rice from, from Monday. Um, John Jr. cooks for us on Monday. So had, say, his father said he wanted to save him some, so I put some up in the refrigerator. So it was warming up the food, so I got collard greens. I got string beans from past, Pastor John and I got collard greens from Pastor Deborah. Where's the rice? <laughs> like they say, where's the beef? <laughs> and I had chicken. So, you know, I'm, I just, just, I'm standing there. I kid you not that rice was talking to me. I'm not making it up, y'all. That rice said, just use a little bit. I looked at that delicious, nice and fluffy. John had cooked it so nice. I looked at that fluffy rice in that bowl that I was warming up for Pastor John, and I said, just a little bit. I recognize that that's an addiction. We can have food addictions, you know. Just because you ain't never been on drugs don't mean you're not addicted. That rice was talking to me. Just a little bit. 
And I say, God help me. Now I've been making this faith confession about what I eat and stuff and I'm like, God, I'm doing so good. Not only do I feel better, but my skin is healing and I'm not itching all the time. All of that sugar was putting a lot of inflammation in my body. A lot of our sicknesses start with inflammation. It'll kill you, get in your joints and everything else. So I, I said, it's talking to me. I'm getting ready to talk to it. I'm serious. And it said to me, you ain't losing no weight anyway. Got nasty with me. <laughs> They're giving up everything and you ain't losing. I said, use a lie. And even if I don't lose none, I'm healthy. And I will not eat you. I'm in the kitchen talking to some rice. <laughs> There's a spirit behind white rice. Oh, I said, this is too funny. But I'm here to tell y'all, if you don't talk back to stuff, it might be white rice with me, but it's something else with you. But I asked God to help me. You know, some people would say, well, you know, a little bit of rice, and it's not that, you know, I could go the rest of my life and never have any, but the point that I'm trying to tell you is I, I'm on a mission, and we have to learn how to be disciplined. And if I do a little of that, then I do a little something else, and a little something else. I'll say, uh-uh, no, I'm not. So me and the rice had a conversation, and praise the Lord, I won. No rice went on my plate. I ate my dinner, and I was good to go with a healthy keto regiment on my plate and I felt good about myself I went in there did my little exercise and I was good saints one little step at a time don't try to jump right away in the ocean but one at a time learn how to have discipline over something <laughs> something and see I realized for me that's a big something because I've been doing white rice all my life I was reared on it porridge they would put milk over it Anybody know what I'm talking about? They come from West Indian family. They put rice. They would put that rice in a bowl and put some sugar, white sugar. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And canned milk. Some of y'all say yuck, but that was delicious. <laughs> and then we'd have rice again for dinner. And then we'd have rice pudding with raisins in it. Sugar going somewhere to happen. Don't leave the Kool-Aid out now. We had to have Kool-Aid. We, we didn't have soda, but we had Kool-Aid. Oh, Lord, wonder why our people dying from diabetes and all kind of stuff. Come on, saints, we got to pay attention. Stop being so ignorant of the devil's devices. So anyway, that was our little commercial right there. <laughs> God is good. So I want to ask you a question. How can both these Old Testament scriptures, the promises in these scriptures, be fulfilled in the New Testament believer who both scriptures, Psalm 103 and 3 and Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, were prophesying to how, hallelujah, to, to the New, was prophesying to the New Testament scripture, but it's in the Old Testament. New Testament believer, thank you, Holy Ghost, but it's in the Old Testament um, covenant. How do we know that this is speaking to us? See, I jumped ahead and gave y'all the answer, so everybody should have it. It has to be talking about Jesus, because he's the only one that could fulfill it. That's why I gave y'all the answer ahead of time, and then when I asked y'all the question, y'all sitting there looking at me. Both of these Old Testament promises, they are fulfilled in the New Testament believer. Hallelujah. Both of them, Psalms 103 and 3 and Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Hallelujah. They were prophesying to the new covenant church because Jesus is the only one that could fulfill it. Both can only be fulfilled in our New Testament Christ. Nobody in the Old Testament could be, for, could be forgiven of all their sins and healed of all their diseases except there be a blood sacrifice. 
Theirs was temporal. Is that right? Theirs was temporal. Every time they did a new sin, they had to get a, another sacrifice. Yeah. We have one sacrifice for all. So both of those scriptures giving us the promises of for forgiveness of all our sins, healing of all our diseases, is, has to be pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's get the scripture in the New Testament that fulfills that. I, in 1 Peter 2, 24, it fulfills Psalms 103, verse 3, and it fulfills... Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. So we're in 1 Peter 2, verse 24. He personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree. So now that takes care of what? The forgiveness of all our sins, doesn't it? He personally bore, he bore our sins. He wasn't talking about his sin, he never sinned. So that fulfills the forgiveness of whose sins? Our sins. It said he personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as on an altar. We know that it was a cross. He offered himself on it that we, who's we? Who's us? Have to be a believer. Come on, not just anybody, that we the believer might die and cease to exist to sin. Why? It no longer has dominion. When a believer sins, it's a free will. You chose to. I chose to. We chose to. No longer does sin have dominion over a believer. Why? Because we have a new nature we have to deliberately go to the old nature's way of doing things yes we do because there's no sin in our new nature what's in our new nature love joy peace goodness temperance that's in our new nature the bible tells us Glory to God in Galatians 5. What is our new nature? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. That's our new nature. That's the nature of God that lives inside of us. So not one of those words will let us know that we have to sin. Is that right? The nature of God. So he personally bore it in his body that we might die and cease to exist to sin and live how? To righteousness. That's the gift of God. That's our new identity. That's who we are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Who are you? The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are Christians who are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who we are. We've been gifted with that title. Is that not right? Hallelujah. So we're to live to righteousness by his wounds. We're talking about that blood now. His wounds. You have been healed. The wounds that forgave us is the same wounds in the stripes that healed us. Yeah. Isaiah talked about it. He will be wounded for our transgression. He will be bruised for our guilt and iniquity chastisement of our peace was upon him and with the stripes that wounded him the stripes that wounded him we Isaiah says we are healed but Peter now says what read read the words in the scripture you have been healed so what does that mean it's a done deal so if we have been healed then we don't have to accept sickness in our bodies anymore we have been healed. So when sickness show up, what do you do? You run to the doctor and get some pharmaceutical medicine. That's what you do. <laughs> some of y'all couldn't even look at me after I said that because that is the first thing you do. You do that because you're afraid to wait on the word working in you. And I say if you're afraid, get to the hospital, go to the doctor, do whatever you have to do because I might do it too if I get sick enough. But I want to be so full of God's word until I can't stay there. 
I can't stay in that position. Some people need to do it for a temporary time, but somebody need to grow up and open your mouth and speak the word. So you don't have to sit here feeling guilty. You ain't got to go somewhere and die because you ain't ready for it. I'm here to tell you that that's the best. We should be striving for God's best. Why? That he's the source of it's already been done. Am I making up something? Am I preaching my own gospel? Am I? Come on. I'm, I'm telling you what the word said, and every one of us need to strive for what the word says. So if you ain't there yet, you ain't got to leave here feeling guilty and all other kind of stuff. But I would admonish you, don't stay there. Because some stuff going to come up, the doctors ain't going to have no answers. My brother went in the hospital almost a month ago. We prayed for him. You all remember? I told him yesterday, I said, I've been begging you to get your hips in a church and sit down. People don't think they need the church, but let me tell you something. The church is more than a social club. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the place where the word go forth and spirit and life come out of it for you to hear and you'll get healed. They done moved him from the hospital to the reservoir. He ain't there to swim. Then he told me yesterday that you can, when you come in there, you got to have on a, a gown and, a, and gloves and a mask because he done got some kind of infection in there. Let me tell you something. I'm so glad Loretta came in here today. See, some people would run from the church. She came to the church in pain. God had already spoke to me. He gave me that song, and he, when I seen her come in the door, the Lord said, call her out. I did not know that she was going to come in in pain, but look how God was ready for the glory to hit her body. God's house is where we're supposed to come. This is the hospital. Only thing is our medicine don't have no side effects. It's the glory that heals us. And the glory filled this place and some of y'all got the overflow because hallelujah, whatever God prophesied concerning her was for anybody that needed it. And then God began to call out different people and tell me to lay hands on them. Glory to God. I wasn't just making up people. I didn't touch everybody because God didn't tell me. Some of y'all could get it without me touching you. Because you know how to tap into the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. The God had lived inside of you if you are born again. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to be in a church where the signs and wonders don't flow. I don't want to be in a social club. I had enough of that when I was growing up. I don't want to come to church sick and go home sick confused and go home confused come angry and go home angry he called us together so a difference would be made the bible said every time they came together in the book of acts they they received the word they received the holy communion table yes they did they received prayer and everybody's body was whole you don't never hear about them people walking around sick the people out there were sick but not the believers wasn't sick and we've got to. We are part of that church. We're not a different church. We are an extension of the New Testament church in, book, in the book of Acts. That's why it don't end, because we're still writing it. Yes, we are. There's still apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And there's still the saints that believe God's word. Every person in here that's born again have the ministry of reconciliation he reconciled you so you go get somebody and bring them in the anointing that's on my life is on your life we do have different levels of responsibility but we all got the same God living in us oh hallelujah I'm pouring into you so you can pour into somebody else somebody bless his name right now yeah so we see 1 Peter 2.24 is the confirmation, hallelujah, of David's psalm to the church, 103 and 3, and Isaiah's prophetic word, 53, 4 and 5. It was fulfilled in our New Testament Christ. They prophesied about our Lord. David was jealous over the church. He saw into the future. Jesus, through his natural parents, came through the genealogy of David. So God gave David a glimpse, hallelujah, a glimpse of a new people that were coming 
that had never existed before. We're a new species. Nobody that God ever created before in the history of man that he could come and live inside until after the new covenant was sealed with the blood. We are new covenant people, a species made in the image and likeness of God. Our spirit man has been, hallelujah, breathed on again. The Bible said he breathed into their, not, uh, their nostrils. After he clumped them from the ground, that's what he formed our bodies. That's why every one of us, the, the substance or the source to which we were created, we need that in us to sustain us. So that means people who don't like vegetables and fruits and plants, everything that came from the ground, you're depriving your body because your body got to have that. You got to have what the source that you came from. Your body needs healthy vegetables and fruits and all of that stuff and not this man-made stuff that's killing us. Body don't know what to do with it. But we were also created spirit and soul that's made in the image and likeness of God. So he's the source. So what does, what is the substance that our spirit and soul needs? We need God. And how do we get God? Through his spoken word. So he breathed into this dirt, this clump of dirt. He breathed into it. The breath of his life. Spirit life. We became a living soul. So our spirit and our soul is so closely connected. But because we have come into a fallen world, we need our soul man renewed. So what is the substance that we need to stay healthy in our spirit and our soul? The word of God. He breathed into his word. His word is spirit and life. So glory to God. So we have to continuously speak the word of God into our spirit and our soul and because the words of God is so powerful they change elements they obey us when we speak everything natural obeys the spirit and life words of God so what do we do we speak to our food we speak to our bodies and we say you are the temple that houses God in this earth and you will line up yeah, come on, because you are supernatural, and your body got to be sustained so it can house the supernatural of God. When it gets all broken down, it cannot function properly. God wants us to live our lives so we can fulfill our purpose. And that means I need every bit of my body to line up with purpose. That's why Jesus went about healing every person that came to him. God, to this day, hates sickness and disease. But we, the new species, we are so privileged to have God living inside of us. What, can't, what can be in us that God can't quicken? I said, what can be in us that God can't quicken? Nothing. But you got to know it and expect it. And you can't wait till it gets so broken down. You're trying to build up your faith. Your faith won't catch up sometime to the disease or the circumstance or the situation because your mind has not had time to be renewed because you don't think that's important. To eat the spiritual food that's going to sustain you. So you wait until Wednesdays and Sundays. Let apostle do the work. I'll just sit and take a few notes. I ain't going to open this book until the next week. I ain't going to get the tape because, you know, that's old-fashioned. Listen to a tape. I ain't going online either because I don't go online. I'll just wait till I get there next week. Hopefully she'll touch on it again a little bit. Are you serious? It's a matter of life and death that your spirit man eat so it can sustain your flesh it will sustain you if your spirit man is not strong enough to sustain you your physical man will take you out of here prematurely I'm preaching harder than you saying amen but that's okay <laughs> Saints, 
this is the reason why the teaching that I shared about the Holy Communion meal is so vitally important to the body of Christ. After hearing my son online talking about how people are taking it right on out of their, their services. You know, I was thinking about that and I said, the warnings that we get in there, it might be good if they do. The warnings we get in 1 Corinthians 11 about not discerning, not doing it right. I said, maybe it's good. They don't. He said, because this is the reason why you're sick and you're weak and you're dying because you don't understand the power in my body and my blood. They can't function if they ain't going to do it anyway. It's sad. But people like us need to make it our mission to teach it. You all have opportunities. All my leaders have opportunities to go out. All of the full gospel members, that call is on your life. Ministry of reconciliation. Bring others to Christ. In spirit, it said, and in deed. That means teach them every single thing that I've said. We have the opportunity because we know truth. Hello? We, we, we have understanding. That's why I believe this Holy Communion teaching meal, teaching that I did on last week is, was just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Let me tell you something. It was given to the new covenant believer as our Lord's way of reminding his church of the proof of the finished works of the body and blood of Christ Jesus on Calvary's cross. It reminds us, the Holy Communion reminds us of the proof of the finished works of the body and blood of Jesus. When we, use, when we do the Holy Communion table, it's like we're looking at that cross and everything the cross did and understanding what did his body do for us on that cross and what did his blood do for us on that cross and walk away from it knowing this is the proof of my complete redemption. Why? Because the cross is finished. That's why Peter said, we were healed on that cross. Yeah. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians 11. I want to look at that 29 and 30 again and show you something new that the Lord showed me on Wednesday night that I shared that cousin Andrea had me listen to. Verse 29, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 29 and 30. I want to lift that up. For anyone who eats and drinks, what are we talking about now? The Holy Communion meal? Anyone who eats and drinks without discriminating, or in the King James and some other versions, it says without discerning, okay? Discriminate or discerning and recognizing. When you discern, you recognize something. You also understand. Anyone who eats and drinks without understanding, without realizing, without recognizing, discerning, perceiving, that means getting revelation. Are you with me so far? Distinguishing is another word. And recognizing with due appreciation. So what? When we, when we eat and drink the Holy Communion meal, he's commanding us. This is his executive orders that we're supposed to appreciate. Appreciate what? That this Holy Communion table is what? Christ's body. Now I know we use natural elements. But we're not supposed to be looking at the Holy Communion table as a cracker and some juice. He said, he said, we are supposed to discern. We're supposed to discriminate and recognize with due appreciation. What are we appreciating? What his body did for us on that cross. Now, when he say his body, he's not leaving out his blood because his body carried the blood. They're all one. Then he says, if you don't discern properly or understand what you're doing, not appreciating it, 
just tacking it on the service or every now and then some churches now they don't even they don't even uh, uh, use the blood the cup they just do the bread or some don't do nothing if you don't appreciate there is a significance in appreciating what this his body did for us you and I are gonna fail miserably if we don't understand that we have got to appreciate what this his body has done for us so what does he say they eat eats and drinks a sentence a verdict of judgment upon themselves are you hearing me now I'm gonna tell you why in a few minutes then he says in verse 30 that careless he's calling it careless because you and I or whoever doesn't appreciate that this is his body he said that careless and unworthy participation we always thought he was talking about unworthy when it come to us it don't have nothing to do with us all we do is receive the unworthiness is that we don't give worth to what his body has done careless and unworthy participation is the reason is the reason he's talking to the church he's not talking to the world God gave this to the church for a reason he's saying the reason the reason many of you are weak in other words if you appreciate and understood what the body did you wouldn't be weak in the church the reason that you are weak the reason that you are sickly and the reason that quite enough of you have fallen into the sleep of death meaning that you died prematurely before you finished your purpose what is God, I mean even a baby should be able to understand that God is saying when you do these elements when you understand my body the body and the blood the bread and the cup is my body I gave these elements to you glory to God every time you partake of this meal Jesus said you're reminding me of what I did for you in Psalms 103 verse 3 Isaiah 53 4 and 5 and 1 Peter 2 24 you are you're showing me that you appreciate that by his stripes I'm already healed by his wounds I'm already forgiven every time you eat and drink you're reminding him of the finished works we tried to use the Holy Communion table for years to get healed and to get forgiven well if we need the Holy Communion meal to get healed and to get forgiven then what he did on the cross wasn't final because we still got to do something no, he want us to look at these elements and see the Lord's body and his blood and we're supposed to focus on what it did. Appreciate what's already done. And receive what's been done for us. He said because when you don't do that, a whole bunch of you in the church is going to be weak, sickly, and dying prematurely. But if you would appreciate and understand what my body and my blood my body and blood did for you you don't have to ever be weak sickly or dying prematurely because I gave you something the world don't have listen to this now this is the revelation that I got I want to add this please listen closely God I worship you Jesus instructed his church through the Apostle Paul he said do this do this meal eat my body and drink my blood in remembrance of everything that I have done for my church everything that I have finished for you on Calvary's cross do this to remember it's the proof that it's done when I look at his body because see if I just look at that as just bread it's just that's natural food if I look at the cup that's just natural drink but if I do what he told me to do I look at the bread it's no longer the bread it's his body what did his body do for me I can't do anything but develop my faith because I know what he's done for me once and for all 
once and for all. It's a once and for all sacrifice. When I look at the cup, it's no longer juice or water or whatever you would use. Because that is not even an issue. But I'm looking at it as his blood. What did his blood do for me? I've studied it. In what? Psalms 103. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. 1 Peter 2, 24. What do all of them promise me? That is done. All of those scriptures tell me. Every one of my sins. Every one of my diseases. Every one of them points to who? Christ Jesus' sacrifice. So Jesus said, now my church is going to have my sacrifice every day to reflect on, to build their faith in. When they see my body and when they see my blood, they're immediately going to think about the finished works of the cross, that he did it for me and I don't have to do it for me. I need to accept, I need to appreciate what he did. I need to recognize what he did. I need to discern properly what his body did and what his blood did. Listen. This meal is the proof of our complete redemption. The bread, listen to this now, becomes, I said the bread becomes his powerful body once I eat it. You better hear God today. because This is a great revelation. Once I eat it, it becomes the body of my Savior. Something supernatural happens once I eat it. While it's laying on that plate right there, it's just bread. It's a cracker. It's whatever you choose to use. But God said, because I discern his finished works, once I eat it, it becomes the body of my Savior. It becomes his powerful body. We become one with his divine wholeness and health. Because I need to be reflecting on the fact of how is he right now? We're going to go to that in a minute. Listen, the cup, the cup, the juice becomes his all-powerful blood once we drink it. We now partake of his complete forgiveness. It can no longer be natural elements. Once I eat it, it becomes his body. Once I drink it, it becomes his blood. What did his body do for me? And what did his blood do for me? And 1 John 4 and 17. Let's connect this now. 1 John 4. Tell the Lord thank you. Verse 17. 1 John 4 and 17. I want you to get there and see this. God, only God can connect stuff. He took me to this scripture after I saw Pastor Prince declare this online. He took me to the confirming scripture in 1 John 4, because you know I got to have a word. 17. In this union and communion with him, well, what is the Holy Communion table? Union and communion with him. Because when I eat the bread, it becomes his body. When I drink the cup, it becomes his blood. I'm now in what? I'm one with him now. I'm one with what? His body and I'm one with his blood. Not the cracker and not the juice. It Once I eat it and drink it. I discern that this is his body. He said that's the reason why people are sick and weak and they're dying prematurely because they don't discern that this is his body. In this union and communion with him, 
good God Almighty, and I do it every single day. Love is brought to completion. You'll never doubt again about his love. Because his, his body and his blood is doing something in you. It's alive. It says, this love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us. Your body will come into perfection. When you rightly discern when you appreciate what his body and his blood did for you, you're partaking of his body and his blood. He says, this love, he loved us so much that he took what? Every one of all of our, our sins and every one of all of our diseases. Did he not? This love, the love of his sacrifice is brought to completion and attains perfection with us that we may have confidence for the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. Every time I eat his body and drink his blood, I am acknowledging union and communion with him and those elements that are alive now, because it's not just a cracker or bread and juice, it's his body and his blood. I am now becoming one with him. My body is getting healthier and stronger because why? He is in me. And I believe everything that his body did for me and his blood did for me. His body for, hallelujah, healed every one of my diseases his blood forgave me of every one of my sins. Every time I eat his body and drink his blood, I'm acknowledging his finished works of the cross. Saints, once I eat it, the bread is no longer a natural element. I'm obeying the table that God gave to me as the proof of my complete redemption. Every time I drink that cup, I'm acknowledging the proof of what his blood did for me on Calvary's cross. I accept the forgiveness of my sin, but I have to also accept the total wholeness of my body because they both happen on the same cross with the same blood on the same day from the same body that he told me to appreciate. Listen, as I close, when we eat and drink these holy elements, his body and blood, we are declaring to every devil that the greater and mightier one is living and growing on the inside of us. <sighs> and we have defeated them. Go to chapter, uh, verse 4 of that first chapter. John 4 and 4. Little children. You who are of God, you belong to him and have already defeated and overcome them, the agents of Antichrist, every single thing that comes against what Christ has done. You have. Every time we eat his body and drink his blood, God have mercy, we're declaring because he who lives in you, <laughs> every time you eat his body and drink his blood, he who lives in you is greater and mightier than cancer, 
heart disease, diabetes, lung problems, breathing problems, back problems, eye problems. He who lives in you, every time you eat my body and drink my blood, you are acknowledging, declaring, and appreciating what my body has done for you. He is mightier than he who is in the world. I almost can't take it. God, <laughs> we must obey our Lord's executive orders and discern Get Holy Ghost's revelations from the word of God concerning how the finished works of Calvary's cross has already healed us and forgave us of all of our sins. And the same blood from the same body of Christ Jesus was given to his church to live in the Zoe life of Christ, healed and whole and not dying prematurely, but fulfilling our divine purpose on earth by always remembering the body and blood of our Savior and how our healing is truly a part of our complete forgiveness and righteous position in Christ. When the church does not receive the benefits of this Holy Communion meal every day, we open the door to the enemy to accuse us, first of all, of sins that have already been forgiven of by Jesus on the cross. We open the door to the enemy also, that the enemy now can put sicknesses and diseases on us that was already born on the cross by the Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us the Holy Communion meal. for the church to continuously build your faith in the knowledge. You can see his body and you can see his blood. The Bible says, as he is right now, is he sick? Is he afflicted? <laughs> is he depressed? Is he ineffective? Until I eat the bread, it does not become his body. Until I drink the cup, it does not become his blood. But once I eat his body, and drink his blood I become one with him he is the greater one living on the inside of me that has overcome every single assignment can't you now see how God fixed it the Holy Communion meal is a secret weapon against the enemy and the devil got a nerve to try to get the church Oh God, the one thing that can keep us whole. Shout out both sides. When David prophesied it and Isaiah decreed and prophesied it, they was only pointing to one person that can forgive you of all your sins and heal you of all your diseases. Nobody else, not no prophet and nobody else could fulfill that but Jesus Christ. And he gave us a way. He said, when I go away, I'm going to send the comforter, somebody that can live on the inside of you. And so every time Holy Spirit sees us coming with his body and we're eating it, and every time he sees us coming with that cup and we're drinking it, Holy Ghost is confirming that word on the inside of us. He is the one that quickens our bodies every single day. Just like he raised Jesus' dead body from the grave. He quickens our bodies 
every single day. Why? So that we can fulfill our purpose on earth and not any of us in the Lord's body have any right to be weak, sickly, or dying prematurely. I need you to stand to your feet. I feel God. Oh God, share their both sides. This is what I've been looking for for so many years. God, show me. How does these elements <laughs> become one with me? How? Hmm. I don't know. I have preached a lot of messages. But these last three messages that I have preached, I do not believe that any of them could ever have been as effective on me. I can't speak for you. As these three messages have been in my life and I believe that people all over the world that hear this message is going to start receiving the benefit that God gave to the church do you know how privileged we are he gave it to the church He gave it to the church. Now you and I are responsible to give this message to other people. Get people healed and delivered and set free. God, I thank you. Saints want to have a relationship so pure with God till you open his scriptures and you get these kinds of revelations they're for the body God don't want us being ignorant it's time for us to set the world free but the church got to be free we're supposed to provoke the world to jealousy they're supposed to see us healthy, whole, prosperous, wealthy in every area. They're supposed to ask questions. Why are you, why are your children always spared? Why are your children always protected and blessed? Why, why, why is your life so awesome? How come you not in distress over stuff that's going on? Why are you so peaceful in the midst of things? I get to look at my Lord's body and my Lord's blood every day and I eat his body and I drink his blood and I recognize that we are one. What's in him is in me. As he is, so am I. And I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger because when I eat his body and when I drink his blood, supernatural things happen because it's just bread and juice if I don't eat and drink it. But once I eat and drink it, it transforms. I said it transforms. Where does it transform? In me? It strengthens me. It builds my faith that the greater one lives a mighty greater one. He's greater and mightier than anything else in the world. And he did this all for me. And he did this all for you. And he did this all for us. And we are going somewhere. Because revelation knowledge, glory to God, has come. We're not trying to put some little pieces together. God has given us a whole sentence with a period at the end. He's saying, this is what it is. And I vow to God. I cried out to him yesterday morning. I said, God, I will stay in your presence. I have got to have truth coming out of my mouth. You ought to be saying the same thing. I've got to have truth coming out of my mouth. When I say something, decree something, declare something, I want to see something. Oh, 
I already got a vision. I'm telling y'all. When I was bowed over, God began to show me. He said, if you can see it, you can have it. And I began to see myself. I don't remember the color suit I had on. It was a pantsuit. And I was the size that I want to be. But this was the thing. I was many years older. My back was as strong as somebody in their 20s. And I was walking like this across the pulpit, just preaching the gospel to people. Hundreds and hundreds of people. God let me see that. God will let you see something too. Because God got a plan for your life. And it's not sick, sick, sickness. It's not poverty. It's not confusion. This is the only profession. And I'm calling it that for a reason. This is the only profession that you don't retire from. You translate from. This is the only profession that when God get ready, he'll call you home, you step over into glory. This is the only profession that God will strengthen you to keep going. You think about it. People who retire in the natural, if they don't get involved with God, they die. They have no more purpose. But when you connect to purpose, God rejuvenates you. When Caleb was 85 years old, he said, give me my mountain. There were all kind of enemies over there. He went and took his mountain. That was promised to him. Hallelujah. When God promised him and Joshua because of their faithfulness to believe that they could inherit that land. 85, the Bible said his eyes weren't dim. He was strong. And so are we. And Caleb was not even under a new and better covenant. He was in a new species of beings. He did not have the Godhead living inside of him like we do. Stop saying what you can't do. Stop claiming something below your privilege. If you let that stuff come out your mouth, curse it quickly so it don't root. Say what God says about you. God, show me that thing. I see myself, and I praise him every time. He lets me see myself strong in purpose, setting people's lives free. And that's what I want to do until the day I leave here, is speak to people the revelatory words of God that will change their lives forever. I'm excited. And I'm excited for you. Because he chose you <laughs> to be in a church that care about the word. We're not here for formal fashion. Shout out both sides. Hallelujah. 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 So you can go to your little one hour church if you want to and get nothing. Or you can come to a church that's filling you up. This is the filling station. You can go out all week long and be sustained because God's not holding anything back from you. Healing, deliverances, time to worship and praise him. But the word is good. Hallelujah. One more time, just give the Lord some praise. Come on, come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Get in that holy communion every day. Thank you, Lord. I want to personally thank Cousin Andrea. She back there working the thing. But come on out of there so I can see your face. She was like in an urgency. I got to show you this apostle. And God, I'm telling you, he shot adrenaline in me. I said, I, that's what I've been waiting to see. It's not his body and his blood. It's just crackers and juice. Until you eat and drink it, God transforms it on the inside of you. Come on over here, cuz. That was God using you. Shout out both sides. Thank you Thank so you much. Good God. Good God. That's why we need each other. Got to be teachable too. Got to be open to receive from people. Yeah.